Welcome to the world of deep tech. In our previous video, we looked at the importance of partnerships for successful commercialization of advanced technologies. In this video, we will look at some agreements governing these partnerships, especially in the context of creating and evaluating technology and IP. The basis of a good partnership agreement is mutual understanding between the partners about the rights and responsibilities of each party. This understanding, captured under a proper legal framework, becomes a legal contract that binds the parties to this understanding. A contract is the first formal step towards a long-term partnership. So, the process of closing a contract is as important as the finalized contract. It involves a shared understanding of the goals and the ways to efficiently accomplish them together. Hence, it helps to have the best advisors who understand the terms and clauses and the organizational context. A contract should be written so that it is easy to understand and interpret by people both from business and legal world. So, avoid jargon and right using simple sentences. The final contract has to strike a balance between business priorities and legal protection. Irrespective of the type, partnership contracts involving technology and IP have several common elements. For full details of all the terms used in such contracts in the university setting, please refer to a source like IP Handbook. I will include the link to it in the description of the video. Here, let's look at a few important ones which are often discussed and negotiated. First, there is purpose or scope of the contract and the term or duration for which the contract is valid. Next important item is the understanding related to confidentiality. This could be related to information about parties involved or terms of contract or information shared among the parties and the outcome of the partnership. A typical contract also includes the warranties from the resource providers and how liabilities related to their use are handled. In addition, it includes the escalation process followed by the parties for resolving disputes related to the partnership. The contract should also cover the mechanics of terminating the contract and consequences of such termination, including clauses that survive beyond the termination. It also specifies the laws that govern the interpretation of the terms of the contract and the jurisdiction used for dispute resolution. Governing law and jurisdiction are especially important to identify when the partners are based in different countries or even different states as clarifying them reduces the cost of dispute resolution down the road. Contracts also include one or more annexes where important details related to partnership agreement that do not fit into the main body of the contract but are integral to it are specified. Depending on the duration and scope of the contract, all these terms are subject to intense negotiation and need to be carefully studied and understood before signing. In the rest of this video, I will cover three specific types of contracts that are often seen in IP creation and evaluation. These are related to confidentiality, material transfer and collaboration. Let's look at contracts that deal with confidentiality. These contracts cover sharing of ideas and information that have value because they are known only to a few people and kept confidential. This could be details of a new invention or know-how related to it. These are the simplest of partnership contracts and generally do not require a great deal of negotiation except for a few terms. The first of these is the definition of confidential information. 
and how it needs to be disclosed to the recipient it is best to be as specific as possible for example the contract could specify this to be information shared only via written or electronic means and specifically marked confidential if the information is shared orally or over the phone the conversation needs to be followed up by a written communication for it to be covered under the contract along the same lines the next term to review carefully is the definition of exceptions typically any information in the public domain or known to the recipient or discovered by the recipient independent of the disclosure by the provider is not covered by the agreement the third clause that is subject to some negotiation is the responsibility of the recipient with respect to protecting the information received this includes restrictions on access and use of the information especially within large organizations the next contract we will discuss is the material transfer agreement or mta here in addition to information and ip tangible physical material is shared with the recipient the recipient is expected to not only protect the material but also information related to it this covers exchange of physical samples of materials prototypes of devices or research tools the first important thing in these contracts is the definition of the material itself apart from the actual material the agreement usually covers any unmodified forms of it such as purified form of the sample or its progeny in case of biological samples transfer of material is subject to a number of restrictions especially across international borders and can be procedurally and financially expensive the sample itself might be expensive to make or needs to be transported under special conditions the mta covers who is responsible for ensuring safe transfer of the material and how the costs are borne the second clause of the contract that bears careful scrutiny pertains to usage the provider of the material would want to place restrictions on the usage of the material and the recipient doesn't really want to divulge how they want to use it as it includes their proprietary processes and ip a compromise where both are assured needs to be stuck for example let's say the material was transferred for testing the performance of the material as a first step towards licensing or collaboration lab prototypes tend to be less robust and the provider is obviously nervous about the unknown conditions the material will be subject to a bad test result in suboptimal conditions can literally jeopardize the deal on the recipient side they want to test the sample blind so that they can literally kick the tires the openness and the trust built between the parties will play an important role in such negotiations material transfer agreements seem deceptively simple but can get quite complicated because of two important clauses the first one is the reach through clause where the provider of the material claims co-invention and ownership rights to inventions made by the recipients using the material they provided recipient can narrow down this reach through by making a distinction between inventions where the material is central and inventions where the material is incidental if i develop the high efficiency solar cell based on spin coating the material sample i received from a provider the provider can reasonably claim joint inventorship and ownership rights to it as it involves significant knowledge sharing and optimization that requires inputs from both sides but if i develop the membrane distillation column which uses a membrane provided by the supplier then it is debatable if the material is central to the invention the second clause that's often subject to negotiation is the derivatives earlier 
we understood that the definition of material includes its unmodified forms and progeny but if i use the material from the provider in a chemical reaction to create a new material who owns the rights to it some providers claim ownership of all the derivatives and care should be taken to carve out the derivative space between the provider and recipient of the materials as you can see material transfer agreements can quickly become complicated negotiations about confidentiality ownership rights and licensing next let's look at contracts governing collaborations the most important part of the collaboration agreement is the statement of work and schedules that are included in the annexes which outline the key objectives of the project and work that will be done as part of the project in addition it outlines contributions of the collaborating parties these include the background ip each party is contributing to the project the resources they are bringing in and any materials that are being exchanged between them and a schedule of when each party is expected to contribute these to the project they also specify the expected outcomes or deliverables of the project including reports data other forms of foreground ip and any tangible materials created in addition the annexes specify the timeline of when each of these deliverables is expected Once the statement of work and annexes are negotiated they become the basis for the other points of negotiations discussed here First among these is the decision on who owns the results of the collaboration An easy way often used is to go with joint ownership either in equal shares or in proportion to each party's contribution but this requires considerable care as in kind contributions like expertise and use of equipment have subjective value this can be a delicate negotiation in itself joint ownership of an asset can be as joint owners or as tenants in common if this is left unspecified in the contract it can be interpreted differently in different countries In addition, joint ownership of registered IP like patents isn't treated the same way as joint ownership of copyrights. So, the path to internal use and external commercialization can become quite complicated and consequently expensive. The next clause that is subject to negotiation is the protection or registration of the different forms of intellectual property. generated during the collaboration the parties have different interests in different fields and geographies so the form and structure of the ip protection and responsibilities concerning the administration and cause need to be negotiated once the ip is protected the question becomes one of exploitation and how the proceeds from the exploitation will be shared Depending on the time frame of the collaboration and the effort required for exploitation this can be a very long way off in the future since there is considerable uncertainty in the deliverables of the collaboration and its value it's often hard to estimate the costs associated with and revenues from such exploitations however delaying this discussion till after the collaboration project is complete can lead to significant uncertainty in the value of the project to the parties a reasonable approach is to limit the discussions regarding exploitation to only broad outlines of commercialization terms with bounds on revenue and cost share to address key concerns of the collaborating parties and outline a process to arrive at the details at a later stage As collaborations can span several months to even several years, circumstances can change for the collaborating parties. As the project evolves, everyone involved learns more and things may get done faster or slower than predicted, or both parties may abandon parts of the project altogether. 
a formal process to incorporate the consequences of these changes and modifications to the contract should be integral to the document as you see negotiating collaboration agreements can be lengthy and complicated now instead of a single project let's say the same parties are planning on doing many different projects at different times it can be quite tedious to negotiate the agreements for each new project and any good or bad experiences from one project could have detrimental effect on the negotiations in this scenario it makes sense to negotiate a master agreement that could come up with algorithmic ways to resolve the most sticky issues and specific projects can then become subordinate to it and outline the specifics this is especially useful for strategic collaborations and requires commitment from the top level of the parties involved a good way to think about these contracts is to see them as nested and evolving as the partnership evolves while a contract covering confidentiality could stand on its own and often the beginning a material transfer agreement involves confidentiality clauses and a collaboration involves not only confidentiality but may involve material transfer finally here is the summary of the different partnership contracts related to technology development and ip creation that we discussed today before you leave don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel thank you